What's going on? Oh, not too much. How you doing, man? Man, pretty good. I just want to bond to her. Heck yeah, man. It's getting everything rolling on down the line. <clears throat> Sorry. I apologize, man. My throat it caught, caught there, and I couldn't come out and say what I was going to say. Now I don't remember what I was going to say, so crap. <laughs> man, I, I tried to watch some of the Olympics tonight, and it's just something about this year. I, I always get excited Summer Olympics time, and I just can't get into it. And it's still early, so I'll probably get there. But yeah, man. It, the Olympics the are weird, part. right? The Olympics are weird. It's like, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I mean, it's just, again, not to beat the – poor horse carcass but there's just so many people in the country that don't want the games to be there i just feel kind of bad that it's going on it's like you know i'm not going to take the espn tack of well the games are going on for one reason that's money the networks wanted it's like yeah that's the one reason anything happens you know like your super bowl last year which i know i chew that bone to death but again every other sporting event during covid had a cloud of COVID hanging over it, except that one. And it's like, football is a fall, winter sport. You know, flu season. The worst of the worst of the pandemic. But we didn't talk about it. The NFL gets a free pass, and I just don't understand that. It's like, man, come on, dude. And the problem is, for me, it just exposes that it's not about news and information. It is about propaganda and sales. That's it. That's all we want you to know is about our product. And it's like, this, y'all suck to hell with you guys, man. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is with the Olympics this year, man. Um, basketball gets going. I'm sure I'll watch that because I do. I love it. And I, I feel for the athletes because that's a short window that you have. And just, okay. just, del- just delaying it a year, I'm sure there are many people like, well, my career's over. Yeah, seriously, man. It's like, that's that's tricky. So, I mean, but at the same time, if there's any sporting event made for not having people there, it's probably that. Yeah, it's cool. It's totally yeah. cool, man. I just, yeah, I just, I wish that the vibe was better. I, and I mean, what I'm giving to it. I wish I was in a better headspace for it, but I'm not, I'm not being a good Olympic watcher. And I'm pissed off because NBC has them, so that means no Jeopardy. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, I'm like gargle a creek over it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the uh, Olympic basketball team, that was one of the talk of a little bit of the town this week was a, uh, and I I don't think he would say that he was snubbed because I think like most players in the NBA are like, yeah, I'm not going whether I was asked or not, but uh, that was one of the topics of conversation that came up. It's like, what do you think of Trey Young getting snubbed by the NBA uh, with the Olympic basketball team? Like, well, first of all, he didn't want to go. Second of all, one of the coaches on the USA basketball team this year is Lloyd Pierce. So <laughs> I think he had something to do with it. Like, yeah, we're not giving him an invite. And I could see Trey being like, oh, wait. Uh, so I get to lose virtually my entire offseason. And go to Japan. F every bit of that noise. Uh, yeah, I thank think, you very uh, much. <laughs> I think um, losing the off season is a big deal because that would be two in a row, man. Now Trey had a hell of an off season last year because any of us that weren't invited to the bubble, they had a lot of time off. But I mean, dude, the heat and people are so weird about. Well, Miami's really falling off this year, dude. Miami and the Lakers, neither one of them was going to make a return appearance because they played to the end of time and then the season yeah. turned around and started and went to like <laughs> operation warp speed yeah. and like no nah, they were neither one of those teams were going to make it back man yeah, giving guys time off it's all good but now i think trey getting snubbed is just a, a narrative in this town that people like but it's funny mm-hmm. that didn't talk about that shit with the uh, all-star game like you should have yeah but no nah, man yeah. it's it's all good in the main also one of the biggest things with team usa Trey Young is not going to contribute what you need. They need size, and they don't have any. And he's not an answer to that. So I do think that a Greg Popovich coach team being spearheaded by Trey Young, I think would be a blast to watch, but it's it's not important. And also, yeah. like you said, I'm glad Trey's getting the time off, man, because despite the fact that every other team 
that made the Eastern Conference playoffs last year is, well, you know, I think the Nets are probably the favorite, but you know, you got to keep an eye on Boston, you got to keep an eye on Philly, and you got to watch out for the Knicks. And it's like, yeah, all those teams we beat. Yeah. Ain't nobody <laughs> saying watch Atlanta. And I'm like, well, okay, cool. I, I, we had a great time last year operating completely off the radar. I'll take that again. I'll, I'll uh, happily take that again. Prefer it that way. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, it's like, sure. Well, it's no no problem. We'll take that. <clears throat> I saw something today that was, uh, I just hate when people do stuff like this. I said, okay, we're going to have the NBA draft from 2018, and we're going to have a redraft. And it's really just an excuse to put Luca in a Suns jersey. Mm-hmm. It's like, first overall to the Phoenix Suns, Luka Doncic, second overall to the Sacramento Kings, Trey Young. And I get what you're saying as far as you think those are the top two players from that draft. That's totally cool. But here is the problem with putting Luka in Phoenix and putting Trey in Sacramento. The first thing with Luka in Phoenix is that's him replacing DeAndre Ayton. And and straight up, one-on-one, which player do you think is better? Yeah, man, Luka. But DeAndre Ayton just helped him get to the finals, man. I think they're pretty happy and comfortable with their pick. Yeah. Trey Young to Sacramento. We just talked last week about De'Aaron Fox, man. And it's just, and again, saying that Trey Young was the second best player in that draft, that's awesome. That is awesome. But going with the draft order and saying, this should have been one, this should have been two. It's like people constantly going on and on about, well, I can't believe the Portland drafted Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan. What were they thinking? Well, they were thinking they needed a center Akeem Elijah won, just went at number one, and Clyde Drexler was there too. That's what they were thinking. It's not that hard to put together once you put it together. Well, Michael Jordan's better than Clyde Drexler. He wasn't in 1984. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Yeah. Anyhow, I don't know why that jumped all over me, but it's, I guess it's just because I really like Trey. I like guys getting their moment in the sun and getting acknowledged and recognized for being as good as they are. But it's like, do not, let's not do this with De'Aaron Fox, man. He, that kid is real good. And one of these days we'll be talking about him. It's it's dumb. It's nitpicky garbage. There's, there, there's a way to look back and do revisionist history, but the way some of the, when, when you make a list like that and you're trying to point out, like, weren't they dumb? It's like, yeah. you're not telling the whole story. I, I totally agree. And I just and any anytime somebody's doing a, a what if like that or a what if that like just absolutely totally positively could never happen. I'm like, why are we even talking about this? Yeah, seriously, man. It's you like know. we didn't do that. It Save didn't that happen hy- that way. It ain't ever gonna happen that way. So why don't we talk about what's happening right now? <laughs> Save that hypothetical stuff for two K. That's what's fun about it. That's mm-hmm. what's fun. You can take um LeBron's heat and play against Larry Celtics. I've done it many times. It's fun. (laughs) It's a lot of fun, dude. You can take the 96 Bulls and play them against anybody. That's fun, too, man. It's like, I'll tell you, man, I was actually doing that, and um, I played an entire, simulated an entire playoff that ultimately wound up with, I don't remember what year. I think it would have been the 2015 Spurs. That might not be right. But it was the last um, big three, the last uh, Tim and Manu and uh, Tony Parker team. <clears throat> and uh, they won the West. I mean, seriously, just like simulating it. They won the West, and the Bulls won the East. And so I sent the first game, and the Bulls win. Then I sent game two, and San Antonio won. Then they go to San Antonio. They win again, so they're up 2-1. Then it's 2-2. Literally goes that way for six games. I'm like, man, I'm playing this game seven. This is awesome. So I literally played that straight up, and I won't go into the explanations of how I play games like that because if you just turn – once you've had a game for a long time, if you turn it on, play as one team, and play, you are going to win. It's more fun if you don't know who's going to win. But I swear to you, that Spurs team actually beat – the Bulls. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I was very, very surprised and impressed because God, it was fun. I had so much fun doing that junk. It was. It was awesome, man. That's good stuff. But the hero, the hero of the day, was Marco Bellinelli. Man, Marco was hot as shit. He had a great game. Awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. So, was that uh, the the finals did wrap up this week? Did we? Uh-huh. 
I don't know if we talked about that or not. <laughs> uh, I believe that the last time we talked, it was just about how good the series was going, but it was yeah. they were heading into game six. So, yes, we can okay. discuss the fact that the Milwaukee Bucks and therefore Giannis and Chris, which all, mm. man, all their post game stuff, just about getting drafted the same year, sticking together, that, that, all that was great. Um, I thought, uh, I'm very happy that Drew Holiday's got a championship. That makes me happy. Uh, I thought that, um, man, what's wrong with me, man? Um, the heck's his name, man? Uh, Bobby Portis. Mm-hmm. Everybody on that team kept talking. Team, man. All for one, one for all. Three Musketeers were all in it together, man. Look out for each other, push each other to get better. And all that stuff sounds good. You can see it with those guys because, man, you could tell Drew Holiday does not like cameras and microphones. He was not, yeah. he, was, he was perfectly polite, but he just seemed really uncomfortable. And he just got to the end of his interview and he was going to put, he's putting the mic back and looking over at the lady. And she, you couldn't see her, but you could tell that she was like, one more thing because the people started chanting. And when he wasn't let off the hook, man, he just kind of made this face like, man, will y'all please let me out of here? And Bobby Portis walks his ass over because that's what the chant was was bobby 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 and bobby walks over basically puts his arm around the guy and literally is giving him the fire exit and drew's all like yeah man you say you know so it's it's been man speaking of you know guys that uh you know so i would i'd like to have that key to the city like this guy's got passes the mic right over to bobby and it worked out awesome (laughs) because he was he didn't want to talk anymore so portis helped him out he passes the microphone over to Portis, gives ESP or ABC, who it would have been then, somebody real cool to talk to. It was it was class and very deft, and I'm like, God, that was handled well. But you can just really tell. Those guys get Coming on. the rescue. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Those dudes really get on, and he could just tell. It was all like, man, let me go help my guy. I, it's what, that's what it felt like. It was really, really cool. And um, I just – I love it. I hate that Bill Russell didn't get to be there to give Giannis the trophy. But I'm glad Giannis won the trophy. And also, um, I, I guess I was going to say not to be negative, but I guess I am being negative. But I, I don't care, man. I don't think until, unless and until LeBron does it, you are never going to see 50 in a closeout game get less fanfare than that. 50. How many times did Michael score 50 in a closeout game? I'll give you one guess. It looks like a fucking donut. Because Michael's done it about as many times as anyone's done it. That, that was an unbelievable game. He absolutely chewed them up and spit them. That was unbelievable. Oh, he's a soft guy. He's a European. Not, not a tough guy. Fuck that. He was like, nah, man. I went back to back MVPs. Honestly, should have been more of a factor this year. But I'll take the ring. Good for him. Man. I love Giannis. I just I love that guy. Because he's one of those guys. And again, what better endorsement for work ethic can you get than Kobe Bryant? Because Kobe was the one talking about Giannis because Giannis used to always go and work with him in the summer, always. And it was like, so what is it that makes Giannis special, Kobe? And he's like, well, the guy just won an MVP award. And then he shows up to work out with me. And he says, I want to work on this, this, and this. And he is always, always analyzing his game and trying to look at what he's – either what he's weak at, which is nothing, or what he wants to get better at. And that's what he says. He's always he's constantly working to improve his game. And I'm like, holy crap, that's awesome. Anyway, I got way sidetracked. I'm sorry. But I'm thrilled for Coach Bud and for Giannis and for Milwaukee. I just I just like that town, man. But it was it was a great series. God, I had so much fun. I've never had more fun watching, I, I wouldn't say any sporting event, but I don't know. It was pretty dang wow. fun. It was pretty fun. <laughs> And the best one in a while, I think. Yeah, I think so too, man. Yeah, man. So we had there was a little bit of a uh, Atlanta connection, and I don't know why. <laughs> this past, I, I I didn't watch the show uh, this past Friday night on SmackDown. Out of out of the clear blue, out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Uh, and one of the things I will say about SmackDown that I. I just watched the clips of it on YouTube, and they were at uh, some outdoor venue. I want to say it was in the Houston area or Texas somewhere. 
and it was a, it was an outdoor place and it looked cool mm-hmm. as all get out so it looked neat but uh bianca belair is out there and she's cutting this promo and she says now we have a special guest announcement please welcome to the screen from the atlanta hawks trey young and the second that i heard that i was like they're doing an event in atlanta but then it dawned on me like they just canceled a smackdown that was going to be at a state farm arena due to lack of interest so i kind of like are they really going to do this and it turns out they're doing a new year's day show at state farm uh that i'm just like okay i'll i believe it when it happens because <laughs> then i mean the, the doing it at state farm is fine but some years the peach bowl is on new year's eve some days it's, some years it's new year's day it just kind of it goes back and forth i tried to look into it and see this year so far it hasn't been uh announced i'm pretty sure it'll be the same day which makes me think like i might want to change <laughs> i might want to change that venue i don't know but uh anyway i thought i thought it was just kind of cool that out of the blue there's trey on there i'm like oh man this is exactly what i was afraid they were going to announce <laughs> can't, can't go wrong with trey man i like yeah. trey's a star man so anytime yeah. anybody wants to give him a little exposure i'll take it that's cool man. oh yeah and it, it was it was fun it was cool it was a nice Hell little yeah. uh spot on the show for Trey. So I was like, hey, cool. I'll take I'm, it, man. I'm, I'm, th- I'm there for it. <laughs> yeah, man, man I, I'm sorry. Let me bounce back on one last thing about the Bucks, because when you mentioned Atlanta Connection, I didn't even think about it. I know we talked about Bud, and that's real cool. I'm glad Bud got his ring, because that's just fantastic. But the other thing that goes along with that that I forgot to mention, man, is Jeff Teague got one, too, which is effing yeah. awesome. Because if you're if you're an old school, long time Hawks fan, you love Jeff Teague because, man, he was here and he was great for a long time, man. So yeah. I just think it's cool that they obviously obviously have that coach point guard thing and carried him on over to, to Milwaukee with him. I'm like, fuck, yeah, man, this is so cool. That's good stuff. Yeah, man. It was, it was it was a good one. It was a good one. <laughs> Man, my other sport news that was kind of weird this week. Uh, did you see the uh, the new announcement of the Cleveland Guardians? I did. I, I did team. Man. And uh, when I heard the name, the the mental image that I got in my head of the logo was going to be like a, you know, Viking helmet or some type of uh, just 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 a better looking logo. And what they've got is like it, it, it's not even triple A level. It's barely high school level. It just looks like absolute total crap. Yeah, it's, it's bad. My biggest my biggest problem with it. It's Same? pretty bad. I, my only mm-hmm. issue with it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I interrupted you, man. I apologize. No, no, that's that's fine. It's, it's, I'm just I'm bitching and moaning, which is what I try not to do. It's just it, it the, the the thing that I do like about the name is you really still kind of have the previous name almost there, and the logo and everything. It just it just looks like absolute crap. <laughs> My issue with the Guardians is uh, uh first of all, if you're going to call your team the Guardians, you need to hire Batista to be your full time in-game mascot that's what i'm but talking about it's just it's the same thing that happened with the uh, the nationals washington mm-hmm. senators is an awesome name for a baseball team and yeah. you know i wish if you're going to have a team go back to washington i wish they would have called them that mm-hmm. before they were the indians cleveland's baseball team was called the spiders man how in the world do you not just go back to cleveland spiders that would have been yeah, well, that would have been so cool i would so that's my only thing that bums me out about it especially cy young was a Cleveland Spider Man. I mean, it's not like they don't have any history with that name. So mm-hmm. that was that was my only thing. But them changing the name, I think, is great. We talked about it, man. As soon as you started seeing the, and this is not, oh, they stopped putting Chief Wahoo on the hats because that was just a couple of years ago. But the first time they busted out that little blue cap with the red C on it, it's like it's coming, it's happening. Yeah. This is this yeah. is happening. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'm assuming if Indians are gone, where next? No, no more Redskins, no more Indians. So you, you know, I'm excited about that. I, I, I only hope that, I just hope that they go with what 
we've talked about before, man. Just yeah. change that E to an O and you're you're off and running, man, because it's organic. <laughs> Everybody calls them that anyway. Everybody calls them that because that's just what fans of the team call them. And this is stupid, but it's my note that we've talked about before. The single best uniform in all of baseball is Atlanta's home uniform that doesn't have the tomahawk on it already anyway, man. So mm-hmm. no no problem. I have no problem just, with it. Just space it out and keep on rolling and see if anybody even notices. That's it, dude. That's it. Just like, I, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. But I think that – Excuse me. I think the only one, uh, Seminoles, I think, is the only one that's going to last. Because as far as I know, the the Seminole Nation in Florida, is they've endorsed that. They're cool with that. And the second they change their mind, they're not cool with it anymore. Hey, man, we can change it then. But until then, just back the hell off. If they, if they like, they're cool with it. If they like it, then it's no problem. It's not a problem until it's a problem for them. And then if you want to fix it, you can fix it. But then, until it's a problem, there's nothing to fix. So leave that one alone. But the generic stuff, Indians, Braves, Warriors, Warriors will be interesting if people want to get up on that one. I don't think they will because that word has been, it's so, you know, it's used for everything now. So it's like, I don't know if we'll go that far. Um, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the hockey team in Ohio, they did a really, really deft little about face with their little bumblebee mascot with his, you know, Union Army jacket on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Blue Jackets are an Indian tribe. That's where that name came from. But they've switched it up and they've got the cannons on their shirt. No, no, it's about our Civil War heritage, about our Civil War history. And I'm like, I thought we were getting rid of that. But I guess if you win, you don't have to get rid of it. Yeah. But, um, but that's, you know, good on you. That's very clever to, to be able to keep that. But anyway, um, Guardians would not have been my first choice. I got no problem with them changing the name. Uh, I like it. I hope they can keep it close enough where they keep their road uniforms because they're like the road grays that say Cleveland on them. Those are, God, those are great looking uniforms. But I don't mean to obsess over the clothes. It's just that baseball uniforms now are everybody except the Marlins. They, everybody is looking great. The Marlins stuff is trash and they change it every half hour. So whatever. But other yeah. than them, other than them, everybody looks awesome these days, and that's just cool. It's, it's an important part of the game is what we look like. <laughs> we I'm huge. Try. I love. I'm huge on uniforms. I love that kind of stuff, man. It's why it bums me out so damn bad whenever you tune into any MLS game now, and it's like which team is wearing white and which team is wearing gray, and it's like, dude, team colors are fun, man. You don't. I don't need forty-seven alternate uniforms, and. Uh, I don't know. And college football is really bad about that too, because everybody's got an all white and an all black uniform. And it's like, it's the HD era. Television cameras pick up more subtlety now than they ever have before. Why in the world are y'all going with these old school generic create a team on Madden uniforms, man? It's yeah. like, darn. Use it. Use that HD, my man. That's what I'm saying, man. It's, here we go again. Soccer soccer cleats are the first ones to get there, man, because it's the whole deal. It's the reason people started wearing nuclear neon shoes in soccer. It's because, yeah, the cameras pick up on that, and it's like, well, that Adidas logo can be clearly made out, so I guess we owe you a check, Mr. Messi. That's totally what that, what that was about. <laughs> That's I couldn't understand. <laughs> there was a lot of people griping about a. Uh, I, I still watch the Major League Baseball All Star Game just because I, I, I well I'm done. And, but uh, one of the things that I liked the most about the game this year was they had league uh, uniforms. It wasn't just everybody wearing their road or home stuff. And then they had always done that for like the home run derby, but they wore it all weekend that way. And now I didn't like the looks of the uniforms that they had, but I like the idea. Yeah, it's still cool that they did it. Yeah, going forward, I think it's going to be a, a neat thing to do. So, uh, you know, and when Nike uh, sees it, yeah, it, it gets people watching, then we're going to keep on doing it. So I think it, I, I thought it looked cool uh, to do it that way. I just, you know, the design was kind of like, I wouldn't have gone with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I, I like the um, I like the idea of doing it Pro Bowl style. 
it's cool mm-hmm. because at the Pro Bowl from the neck down, everybody's got the same uniform, but you bring your helmet and that just looks awesome where everybody's different helmets are all out there. I, I would do the mm-hmm. same thing with the caps. I know they'll never do it because the whole point with all that crap is to then auction it off and then, you know, Nike gets to write it off at the end of the year. Major League Baseball gets to make a nice big charity donation they can write off. And but mm-hmm. so I get it, but I do think it would look cool to have a uniform, but then everybody's got their individual cap. I'm like, that would be sure. I'd love that. But that's, you know, I guess, you know, when they're batting, I'll bet that is what they do because they're, they're not going to make batting helmets. So, OK, yeah. for half the game, we get to do that. That's cool. <laughs> it's, it's still it's still there. So yeah, it's, it totally counts, man. But I'm with you. I like the idea of having like a this is the American League's uniform. Like, OK, that's cool. Yeah, so, man, I, I got down with that. I, I liked it. I thought it was. Uh, interesting thing to do uh but, you know as I, hopefully they're just not too married to the guardians logo just because this is like uh I'm, I'm, there's probably many because when you talk about minor league baseball there's there's some ugly trash out there and it's, even even they would be kind of like yeah yeah that's that's not that's not for us that looks gross <laughs> it, it was it's pretty bad man it's pretty bad that's again how you couldn't mess spiders up spiders would be awesome but anyway, it's cool i'm it's it's all right but i'm totally with you i saw the little logo thing and i'm like well, i don't know about that that's yeah. what up brother <laughs> well, I, don't, well, well, I, don't I don't know about that dude, that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the back and, and we care we care. We care quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> Important to me. <laughs> there, there might come a day when I want to buy that hat. No, I'm not going to buy that. I'm not buying that hat. It's a terrible hat. And I like hats. <laughs> yeah. It's dumb. Gross. <laughs> God, how many times are you going to say hat? Hat. <laughs> hat. <laughs> Ball cap. Can't wash, my, <laughs> can't wash my Cleveland Guardians game without my Cleveland Guardians ball cap. That's right. There's no point. There's no point. God. <laughs> you ever tried to watch baseball without a cap? You don't care. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> you, you don't care. <laughs> uh, man, uh, between... Uh, Kirby Smart not wanting his players to be thirsty. I don't know a whole lot more <laughs> what's going on in the world this week. Uh, well, there's the God level news coming out of Tony Khan's office that we got to talk about because we like oh, yeah. we like resting a little bit. So, oh yeah, oh there's, yeah, there's that. Yeah, <laughs> that that little thing, that little thing came down the pike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where do we want to start? Yeah. With guy number one, guy number two, or where we think this is eventually going? Oh man, uh, who's who's probably going to show up first? Brian Danielson. I would be very surprised if he's not first. I think that okay. I think you bring Brian along. In my head, <clears throat> you have Hangman beat Kenny, and that opens up Kenny to wrestle. Brian Danielson, because point blank, let me just be real clear straight out the gate, because all the talk about, well, what does this do to Hangman Page? What does this do? I mean, our our Tommy Black, our Tommy Black, um, our uh, Tommy End and Andrade, what are they thinking? Oh man, we messed up. Neither one of these guys is coming in to be the champion. I don't believe that for one second. That's not gonna. I don't think that's gonna happen. These guys are coming in for special attraction shit. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega. I think that's what you do there. I think that's what they're going to do. We'll see. I think that's what they're going to do. I like that. Um, and then I don't know if you have him wrestle somebody in your company or if he then jettisons off to Japan because that's part of the whole thing is that he wants to go over there too. And in AEW, Kenny's the guy straight away. He goes to New Japan, man. You got half a dozen guys that people would like to see him work with there. So there's there's lots of things you can do there. It's it's cool. That's gonna that's gonna be okay. And, and Danielson Omega will be out of this world. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, as far as Punk goes, I don't know. I'm not saying Punk's not gonna return in ring. He is. That's the whole point. 
But again, just that front line. Oh, he's got to be AEW champ immediately. I don't. I do not see that. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I just, I just don't see it that way, man. But it's. Uh, I really don't know where they're going with it. I'm glad they're going with it. I'm glad they worked it out, and it's it's very exciting. It's real exciting, man. Yeah. But the most exciting thing about it is, and I know people are hyperbolic. And I don't think that people really mean this, but JD and his buddy were talking about it, and it was all like, you know, you got people in the chat saying this is it. Oh, man, blood in the water, and AEW is going to kill them, and oh, it's done now. Vince is done. Vince isn't done. They're not going to go out of business. What are you talking about? And I think he's right. That's not what it means at all. It's It was never, I've said this, we've talked about it on here many times before. This was never going to put WWE out of business. And it was never about putting WWE out of business. What it's about is getting WWE to bring their greedy asses back into the fucking sandbox to play with everybody and have a nice afternoon. That's what this is all about. And as far as, well, people say this is going to kill WWE. I don't think it's going to. I don't think anyone really thinks it's going to. But we are a hell of a lot closer now to actually having WrestleMania fucking mean something because everybody everybody is booked here there and everywhere this was the forbidden door it's what you and i've been talking about this shit since before there was an aew that has always been the goal is how do you cross promote with wwe and we're, we're getting closer we're a lot closer now than we were and so that part whatever they want to do with them once they bring them in i'm glad that they brought them in because that shit is exciting as hell man cool it's great it's great man I, from, from from what I've heard and what I've gathered, I would imagine it's uh, Brian Danielson shows up at the big show they're doing at the Arthur Ashe Arena in New York in really a couple of weeks, and CM Punk is in Chicago at a all out. Yeah, just it's just late just, lab, Labor Day. Yeah, just two years too late. Like we talk, I shouldn't yeah. say too <laughs> late. It's not two years too late. In my opinion, I guess that's my thing about bringing CM Punk. We got to give him the belt. Got to give Punk the championship. Bullshit. In my opinion, he missed that opportunity. If you wanted that, you should have signed on early and bet on yourself and bet on that company. But you didn't do that. Jericho did that, and the, well, the big five guys. It's hard to say those those five guys bet on themselves. That's what they did. Jericho saw the bet and was like, "Yeah, I like this too." So that's it. That's why you've got this company. And I could be completely and totally wrong, but all that, well, they weren't serious. They didn't really make me an offer. Oh, they made you an offer. And I guarantee you what you signed for was less than that offer because they've done it for two years now without you. They don't need you. They'd like to have you. And Tony Khan's a nice guy, so he's going to give you a nice like-to-have-you deal. But people that think Phil Brooks fleeced them are out of their fucking minds. He could have. He absolutely could have when he was in Tony Khan's office. Don't believe his lying ass. He was in the office. Everyone knows it. And he got caught in the lie, so he stopped talking about it. Could have fleeced him then. Didn't do it. And now it's, it's Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman talking all that stupid, oh, vanilla midgets on the Indies, man. Once I'm not working, dig, 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 I ain't going to work nowhere. Okay. They took you to your fucking word on that. So I don't know why. If they think he's worth bringing back, why did they get rid of him? Because they're going to get him for a hell of a lot less money now. That was, I think that was always the plan with WWE because that idiot went on social media and shot his fucking mouth off and he's not going to get a job anywhere else. A, because nobody fucking wants him. And B, even if you did want him as a worker, you wouldn't want him as a person. Mm-hmm. So good on you for just shooting your way right out of making more money. And but I, I've gotten sidetracked. I'm sorry, man. But <clears throat> I guess that's my whole thing as far as, oh, man, he'll be the center of the universe today. I don't believe that for a second. I think that you are a lot closer as far as main event talent with Aleister Black, Andrade. Hopefully they're, they've got, you know, man, if, 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 if my like fantasy list, my wish list, if there was one for AEW. Of the guys that I think can help the company out from a brass tax situation, Danielson and Punk, of course, are on there just for name recognition. That helps. But as far as putting them in the ring and making them stars, that doesn't do anything for you there. You already got Tommy. He was way up on the list. You've got 
Rusev, he was way up on the list. They've already done a good job of getting people that can help them as far as the next wave, man. Get Ricochet out of WWE. They're never going to do a fucking thing with him. Get Keith Lee out of there. And yeah. if you can convince somehow, if you can convince Adam Cole to walk away, do that too. But eventually it's not going to matter because they're all going to, I really think that they're all going to be working together. I think that probably, I don't know how soon it'll be, but I, I think it'll be, I think it's, I, that's what I think, that's where I think we're headed. I really do. Because the whole like, well, they want to be WCW, put WWE out of bed. No, they don't. They don't want to do that at all. Because it's like we talked about. If you're writing the ultimate Harley Quinn story, she doesn't kill the Joker. She gets Batman to kill her and makes the Joker watch. That's the ultimate story. That's that's awesome. And it's the same thing. The ultimate AEW story is not, oh, we put Vince out of business. It's that we've literally revolutionized wrestling. Professional wrestling is different now. At least I hope that's where we're headed. Yeah. Be good. If it gets that a ways, I'm down for it. I'm there yeah. for that. <laughs> there's, there's just, there's so much good stuff that you can do. I mean, it's just like when you first start, and it, it sucks because most of the stuff I'd really like to see is obviously not your front line stuff. The front line attraction in all of pro wrestling right now, if we are talking about a world where everyone works together, is the Shield reunion. That's the thing that everybody would just wet themselves over. But I want to see Cesaro and uh, Okada. I just think Cesaro Okada would be the coolest wrestling match in the world, man. It's like, how yeah. could you get better than that? Oh, man, that would be insane. Yeah, man. Insane like RJ. Oh, man, I would love that. So, anyway, hopefully, hopefully we're confirming this, or not confirming this, hopefully we're having this confirmed for us sooner rather than later, but I I hope that's where we're going. I think, I think that's where we're going. Cool. It's going to be good. A time ahead. <laughs> I agree, man. Yeah, man. That's what's up. <clears throat> Seems there was something. Oh, I know. There was something else I wanted to mention on the wrestling front. Yeah. It's different. It's obviously different from, oh, man, Brian Danielson. I, I'm so fucking happy I get to call him that again because the name Daniel yeah. Bryan, I fucking hate. I just hated yeah. that name. I don't like it. If your last name is Brian and you don't make hot dogs, I'm not interested in you. Yeah. Brian Danielson, it's such a better name. It's stupid, but it makes me happy. But it's not him, and it's not CM Punk. But Thunder Rosa has officially signed with AEW now, which is awesome. Yeah. And it's stupid, but I think it's awesome for three reasons. One, mm-hmm. excuse me, <clears throat> I'm glad Toy licenses. Got, so what? <laughs> Toys. That's three. That's, that's <laughs> number three on the list. Number one, I'm just happy for her because I think she's really awesome. Two, you know I've got that fantasy in my head of the um, uh, reconstituted, I guess is the word I'm looking for, uh, um, LAX. Mm -hmm. And that's, I want her in it. And it sucks because I want Zelina Vega in it too, and that's not going to happen. But that's all right. Conan wants to stick around and be the leader. He can do it. No problem. But Andrade, Santana Ortiz, Thunder Rosa, that's who I want to be in that faction. So that's cool because now she's in the company, so that can happen. And number three, I don't think there's anybody in the AW Women's Division that I would rather see a toy of than Thunder Rosa. So I'm very glad that can happen now because she's in the company. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things that uh, it surprise, it, it's a surprise how long somebody can be there and not officially be under contract. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's been a few that have done that, especially like he wasn't already signed up. Like, I guess yeah. not. Dude, that's one of the cool things about it, man, is you can come in and you can get massive exposure on TV and hell, we'll even sell a T-shirt for you. It's like it's, it's like we talk about, man. I think Danielson and Punk signing, I, there's, I don't know. I, I think Brian Danielson's a pretty popular guy. Um, I don't know about Phil. I'm just not sure. But as far as like, we talked about We've talked about it before, man. That it's the next wave is where you're really going to see where the shit's coming from because all you got to do is listen to shooting reviews about what it's like to work in AEW, and then listen to not WWE shooting reviews, but listen to anybody talk about what it's like to work there. You're not. Why would anybody pick WWE over AEW? There's no way, as far as like working conditions, and also, I mean, you are going to run out of 
nostalgia freaks for the attitude era. You, you're just gonna. We're, we're old. We're, we're aging out. You're not going to be able to hire people forever. My God, Stone Cold worked here. You remember that, don't you? Remember Big Daddy Cool? Yeah. So you're, it's not going to work. You're actually going to have to treat your employees decently. Maybe even almost like employees, because that's again, yeah, like we talked about, man. Edge and, well, Edge and Randy Orton, they turned them down. They went back to WWE. Of course they did, because they got the sun, moon, and fucking stars. But going forward, when you find out that, okay, those guys are at the Hulk Hogan, I, me, give me mine table. Everybody else gets treated like crap. You can go down here and actually go to the doctor when you get fucking broken bones. It's just... Sorry, man. I, people believe in that old school bullshit and they think it's going to be like that forever. It's not, man. It ain't. You are operating as an NFL in an NBA world, man. It's just different. Yeah. Speaking of yeah. the NFL and NBA, that was the other thing. Is a uh, Man, we've talked about it for a long time, man. We were talking about hoping to see wrestling where everybody can do everything. Because that's something else I was thinking about is how cool would it be if you have um, – uh, and they've done it. Foley did it one year at the Royal Rumble where he was in three different times. How awesome yeah. would it be to have Seth Rollins come into the Royal Rumble, get eliminated, and then Tyler Black comes in and wins it? That'd be cool. We could be doing this shit. I mean, this really yeah. could be where we're headed, which is just awesome. I think that'd be so much fun to have like Seth Rollins eliminated by John Moxley. Then John Moxley eliminated by Tyler Black, and it comes down to Tyler Black and Dean Ambrose. That shit would be mm -hmm. awesome. That would be so yeah. much fun, man. There's just there's so much crap that I just it just it really does feel like we're close. And I know Vince mm -hmm. doesn't want to do it, but hell, Vince ain't gonna be around forever. And Triple H, I think, would have done it yesterday. I sw I swear, I just don't think we talked about that. I'm very proud of us as we discussed that pre God pre COVID. That if you just look in Atlanta, it's amazing. It's incredible. Or, or in professional wrestling, you have amazing shit going on right now, man. Because you literally have this guy who started, not started, but was spearheading a promotion that Dusty Rhodes was the main driving force on. You have his kid starting another company that's going to compete with those guys. And then you have Billy Corgan moving into his old house in Atlanta to do studio tv wrestling man it's it's amazing it's it's all dusty man everything in modern wrestling or at least not even future modern wrestling it's all dusty it's us uh, which is great because oh we're gonna put that fat old man in polka dots it'll be hilarious and it's like boy howdy he just fucked your little plan up didn't he yeah. but the point is i don't think the wwe is ever going to go out of business because the wwe vince is this dumb but they got shareholders, and the WWE is not so stupid to say, okay, X percentage of Y is better than zero. So we used to get W. Now we can get X percentage of Y. We'll take that over zero. The group that never said that was the NCAA. And oh, oh yes. boy, is it coming. It's coming. They. Are, are they even going to be around for another month? No, it's coming, man. It's coming because I'm very happy that, again, check the archives. The old shows are fun, too. How many years, years have you and I talked about Oklahoma and Texas joining the SEC? They didn't join the Pac-12 because they wanted to run the bill up and also because Texas politicians got involved and said, well, if you're going to go to the Pac-12, you got to take Oklahoma State and Texas State with you. In the back 12 said, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Pardon me. And this is all hearsay. This is just conversations I've had with my cousin, because my cousin's a huge Ohio State fan. And he has told me since the home and home between Texas and Ohio State, oh, man, it's their dream to be in the same conference. They love each other, man. Texas fans love us, and we love Texas fans, and Texas is going to join the Big Ten, and it's going to be all right. But they want to bring Oklahoma with them, and the academics just aren't good enough. We're not going to do that. And I told him years ago on the campus of Ohio State University, I'm like, brother, you either take Oklahoma or you're going to watch both of them go to the Southeastern. And this was years ago. It's not like it happened instantly after I said it, but, boy, it's happening now. Yeah. And I love it for several reasons. 
partially just for what it makes the SEC. That's really exciting. That's just super cool. But the main thing I love about it is you just see the NCAA with their chokehold, and you just see those little grains more and more and more falling right through that death grip that you've got, and you're fucking dead. You're dead yeah. because Ed O'Bannon, Ed O'Bannon told you a long time ago, that's my face. It's my height. It's my weight. It's my hometown. Those stats are comparable to what I can do on the basketball court. That's me. Me. Mm-hmm. You're making money off of that. I should be making well, oh, no, 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 man. You're, you're, you're doing everything you told me I couldn't do. I'm just telling you that you need to take that money that you're making and divide it a little bit. Nope, we'd rather not have it. So that's how come college basketball, college football, video games went away. Because the NCAA would rather you have nothing than them get a large chunk of something. So, no, no, no. I would rather have nothing if it means you're getting some. And that's a very antiquated way of thinking, especially in modern and, yes, global business. It ain't going to work. And it didn't work because guess what happened? Licensing, visual licensing. And that's the thing that drives me nuts about, well, you know, it's just going to be a free for all. and It's just going to be crazy with, with, with the kids getting paid. Yeah, the schools get paid off those video games, too. They do. It's not like don't act like you're not. You, the only problem is. You just don't like the situation where you're not making all the money anymore. Well, okay. If you don't want your cut, then you can step out the fucking door and we will put a bullet in the base of your brain. And that's exactly what they did or what they're doing. And I love it because I hate the NCAA so much that I'm absolutely thrilled that then, well, oh, man, ESPN's going to give us how much for college football? <laughs> All right, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mouse is a killer, isn't he? It's all the point. <laughs> well, oh, man, it's been money just ruined everything. I mean, money was fine when it was you making it. I, mm-hmm. I love it. I'm so happy about it. And again, for practical purposes, a Southeastern Conference with Texas and Oklahoma is awesome. A Big Ten with Texas and Oklahoma would have been neat because it puts Oklahoma and Nebraska back on the schedule, which is a great rivalry and would have been a lot of fun. But, like I said, the Big Ten were dicks about it. Well, the academic standings in Oklahoma is just not up to our, you know, shiny, you know, uh, fuck you then, man. I'm glad the SEC took them. And par- as far as getting a nice marquee game back on the schedule every year, Texas, Arkansas which Arkansas is that pain in the ass that Texas has ducked for decades. So it's like, yeah. sweet, and we get to see that. So either Try you, now. Can't, you can't lose either way. And um, it's going to be real cute now because LSU prides themselves on recruiting the state of Louisiana. So many of our players are in-house and then go Tigers. Yeah, we get them all from Louisiana. Yes, yeah, because you pay their dads to change jobs and come on over and work across the fucking state line. Yeah. We'll see, because now you got two Texas schools to compete. Well, let me rephrase that. You have a Texas institution and A&M. And that's, that's also hilarious, too, because I used to love Texas A&M so, so much. But when it became Johnny Manziel University and they wanted to talk all that shit about, we're in the SEC, we're a big deal now. It's like, motherfucker, you are just keeping the bed warm. You, that's all you did. Oh, we just been we joined the SEC, and we don't like the fact that Texas is joining the SEC. Well, if you didn't see it, that's what was coming. You're a moron. You're a <laughs> moron. They on, they only let you in. They only let you in so Texas would see exactly how much money is coming out of that faucet. That's the only reason A and M was ever invited to the SEC, and now that's gone, which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good stuff. Though. But now Tony Kornheiser keeps talking about. Well, it's the end of the NCAA as we know it. It's the end of college sports as we know it, and it's over. And it's all these rivalry games that are going away, but then the ones that he talks about going away have been away. They don't, they're nothing anymore. But the idea of the NCAA falling apart, college football going to a Super League, boy, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, you take the top 40 and – then you just play off between those. Boy, that I'm telling you, all that shit sounds real familiar, doesn't it? What do we say? You either expand the playoff field or you contract the field top to bottom. And that's what we're doing. Thank God. That's what you should do. And as far as, well, these 40 schools, the top 40 schools, for the love of God, I know anytime you reference soccer, people lose their goddamn minds, but investigate just the least little bit what promotion and relegation are and introduce them into college football, you will have a fucking time. That's the best thing you could possibly do. 
It be, that's that's what you should do. And every, anybody with any sense knows it. But especially when you think about college football and how many teams there are, college basketball especially, because everybody's got a basketball team. But college basketball, I am hoping the top level is what that's going to be. We talked about this before too, man. Imagine a G League with Kansas Jayhawks and UCLA Bruins and Duke Blue Devils, because that's I think that's where we're headed. College football just took a step to get a little bit closer to that. But the difference being, and this will always be the difference, the NFL is not going to get involved in any of this shit because they're fucking cheap. NBA will fund their shit. The NBA fund, they will. They fund the G League. They fund the WNBA. They fund it. They got no problem with it, man. They're going to start a league in Africa, for Christ's sake. So you say, yeah, we're going to have this top division of college basketball. And the difference will be the NFL still wants, no, no, you guys take care of that and we'll we'll draft them after the fact. The NBA is going to start signing kids when they're 11, 12 years old. Mm-hmm. And then this is your team. Like, okay, Michael owns the Hornets, right? Okay, so if North Carolina wants to be the Hornets, like triple A team, essentially, you can do that. I think that's exactly what we're going to get to. And I, I can't wait. That would be so exciting. <sighs> Pardon me. Um, I still think college football is done for me, but boy, I would, I'd get excited as hell. If that's what you did with college basketball. That would be so yeah. exciting. That's going to be hell of a day. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, this week, this week has been the, I don't know, uh, probably a lottery ticket I bought four years ago. Probably was the exact numbers this week. Cause all this crap <laughs> we've talked about forever. It's like, here we go, man. It's, it's all happening. I'm like, this is good because, no, no, this is what we – like you and I talk about, man, it's not like a prediction thing. It's not really we get up there like, oh, yeah, this is going to happen and la-di-da, but I'll tell you what I would like to see happen. So the fact that so many of those things – for example, I would love to see Tyler Black win a Royal Rumble that Seth Rollins has been eliminated from. I think that would be <laughs> awesome, so I'm, I'm pulling for that. <laughs> yeah, bound to happen. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. I think that would be awesome. It's going down. <laughs> I think that's it. I'm sorry, man. I knew there was something else. It was like, what the heck else was I supposed to talk about? I talk about my poor fellas here, but oh, Lord. God, they're having a rough time. But for the balance of the sporting universe, man, it almost has to be that way because the Hawks had such a wonderful year that I can't complain about what's going on with United because that's selfish, man. I, I just can't do it. I still love them. They're still fun to watch. I wish we could settle. I, was, I haven't told her yet because – my buddy Darian sent me an email about it, and I just haven't replied yet because I'm the worst. But it's about Gabrielle Ince getting fired, which just sucks. And I'm like, man, I just need to not comment on United coaches ever because I really like Frank DeBoer, man. He's an Ajax guy. It didn't work. Gabrielle Ince used to play for PSG and Man United. I love the guy. Didn't work. So I'm like, damn it, just stop. You're... Excuse me. I have a terrible... I have terrible taste of coaches, obviously. Yeah. So I'm just like, nah, man. Just whoever you guys hire, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> well, I mean, Larry Mudd, don't you say a word. <laughs> don't you say nothing. Don't you say nothing. God, one of the, <laughs> it's, there is no best Larry Munson call, but I do love that yeah. one. There is no yeah. one single best. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just far, far too many to choose from. <laughs> yeah. If you say anything, you're going to screw this up. We're going to lose anyway. <laughs> yeah, man. God, that guy was fun. Right, <laughs> Don't you say a word. Uh, no business way this game. <laughs> Look at the sugar. Look at the sugar falling from the sky. <laughs> it's the best. Man. It's that Scott Steiner thing we were talking about. Mm-hmm. You'll never get that again, man, because no one's going to teach you to do that. He was just, Larry was, oh, it's like, it's more of that stuff where if ESPN was actually interested in making movies or stories, you've got, I mean, you've got the SEC network. You've got the ACC now. You could focus on 30 for 30s just about college basketball and the ACC. And you could focus on literally anything, anything in an SEC town, and you got a series. I mean, it, it, but they don't do that shit because they're fucking idiots. Yep. But if you just wanted to do radio, 
like college football radio in, in this town between Larry Munson and West Durham, buddy. And that's the thing. That's West. That's the modern stuff. As far as tech going back, man, you got Al Serraldo, man. You've got Kim King, the young left-hander. I mean, it's like, that would be an awesome story. That would be an, oh, man, documentary about Larry Munson that dovetails into West Durham, man, you can't fucking miss. God, they're <laughs> so useless. It's why I hate what's happened. Because you basically bought a product you don't give a shit about just because you didn't want anyone else to have it. And it's like, man, fuck you, dude. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to get gripey, man. Because, again, the positive stuff, like all of the all of the AEW news is unbelievably good. I'm excited about that. And Thunder Rosa being a part of uh, um, the company. And also, um, for Pete's sake, I keep wanting to say Los Ingobernables. It's not them. It's LAX. But that's something as far as the – well – Clearly, we're going to have Bullet Club versus the Elite. That's cool. But LIJ versus LAX would be cool as hell, too, man. I would yeah. like to get down with that real easy. That's a lot more they could do. Oh, dude, yeah. It's like all the crossover stuff is amazing. And once WWE comes to the table and you can start factoring that in, it's just going to be that much more fun, man. Because oh, we've talked about it before, man. And once you get, especially anything Bullet Club adjacent, once you get prince devitt back in the mix once you get adam cole back in the mix man it's there's nothing you can't do and i've been watching a bunch of adam cole matches today so he's fresh on the brain but holy shit that guy's good it is shot it's shocking how good that guy is yeah man heck yeah yeah i think that's it i'm gonna stop talking now i think i think i'm done talking now (laughs) cool man hell yeah appreciate the call man y'all thank you for watching we'll see y'all yeah Ah.